Hello everybody and welcome to the very first really exciting Linda's Corner. Now you might wonder why I'm talking because I'm clearly not Linda, but that's okay. I'm just the host um, and I am absolutely thrilled to uh, welcome you to Linda's Corner with the one, the only, the maven of marketing for Broadcom, Linda Chase. Linda, thank you so much for doing this. We really appreciate it. My pleasure, Andy. I'm looking forward to um, teaching you a little bit about roadmaps today and answering any questions you might have and showing you what they look like. Excellent. Thank you. And yes, that's really the point of this whole Linda's Corner thing. Linda's going to show some of the absolutely amazing things that Clarity can do. But she's going to do it in a way that even I can understand. So um, we're going to start with this concept of roadmaps. And we all know that we have all this planning and that, that we have to do all the time. And then, you know, someone says, oh, yeah, you've got a stakeholder meeting coming up. Um, and apparently Clarity's got this thing that you can just create a roadmap quickly so can you just do that in a few minutes because you're doing this meeting in just a second so linda show me how i can quickly create my roadmap in clarity so that i can keep my stakeholders happy okay let me just share my screen here and you should be able to see the application um yes we can my bar yeah great let me get the bar out of the way and i think we're good um, okay, so I opened up to the tiles page. So these are project tiles. Now over here to the left, we have the nav pane. So I'm going to scroll down here to roadmaps and I'm going to click on roadmaps and you're going to see we already have a few created, right? But what I want to show you, Andy, is just how easy it is to do, right? Anybody can do this. And I've got a couple of different methods that we can do, but let me just start with new roadmap. And let's do one for fiscal year 2021. And we'll just do it for the IT department. And you'll notice I've got a start period and duration period, so I can certainly mess around with those, but I think that's good. Um, so immediately my roadmap is created. Now notice it's blank, right? I don't have anything. I've got this little plus over here. So I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna draw my first roadmap where I think I might want it timeline wise. Right, so let's do website redesign because we know we have to do that this year. So I'm gonna get into that, right? I could change dates if I wanted to, but I'm gonna let it default. I'm gonna pick who the sponsor was for this one and a must have. This is um, kind of a required one, so I really need to do that. Notice that I can also um, delete it if I messed up, change things or add dependencies, but that's all I really wanna do right now. So I'm gonna click done. And now I'm going to add another one. Again, just draw my box, and this is going to pick the start and finish date. So that's pretty easy for me. Now let's call this one marketing campaign, if I can spell correctly, for redesign. Um, because not only do we want to do this work, but we also need to market it after we get done. So add a couple of things there, and I think that's pretty good. So click done and I've got two items and my roadmap is on my way. Now for me, I like to switch over to the grid view and I'll show you what I do because I'm kind of a, an Excel geek. So I kind of like to be able to do things in an Excel format. And from here, I can just click the plus rapidly, right? One, two, three, four times. So now I've got four items that I can fill in. So I will do that. Purchase new campaign marketing. Tool. Um, and this one I know, uh, we're also gonna allow people to order medications online since we're a health company. We thought that that would be the next thing that we really wanted to do, right? Mm. And I'll put REQS for requirements. Um, and then we wanna allow customers, um, patients, to check their invoices. So we'll add that. Um, and we will do credit card processing. Okay, so now you see that I've got, I've got four items, right? So because I'm, I'm kind of into this must have thing, right? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put what these are. These are a top choice or it's a carryover from last year, um, required, whatever it is I want over here, right? So I'm filling those in. 
Now sponsors, I will go ahead and also add my sponsor because as I do a stakeholder meeting, it's kind of key. People always ask, well, who wanted this and who's the sponsors? So I'll put Joyce for that one because that's who it is. And I'll put Paul for this one. Now I wanna show you something cool. See how I am highlighting those two? Well, behind the scenes, I'm doing control C, control V, and I was able to copy down which I, I think is, is pretty cool, right? It's, it's nice, and I can do that with any of these columns. Now I look at this and I kind of go, okay, stakeholders meeting, some of these people don't care about, right? So I am going to get rid of owner, I am going to get rid of benefit, I'm gonna get rid of ROI, and I'm gonna get rid of link to. So I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible, right? Now I need to kind of categorize this stuff. So I'm gonna go up here to view options, and I'm gonna create my own pick list um, and I'm gonna hit manage pick list and you'll see why I'm doing this because we group them, right? And we call ours the big rocks. Um, so what, what are we doing, right? Well, we're doing some things for mobile. We're doing some things for security. Again, helps if I can type. And then we always do something for wow the customer, you know, new things that we know We'll, we'll keep them really exciting, like all that ordering stuff. Now I'm kind of a color geek, so I'm gonna quickly add colors. Okay, that looks good to me. And then I'm gonna do one more thing because it really helps me to know capacity and who's gonna be doing this work. So I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna call this one Teams. Um, and I'm kind of into Star Wars these days. So we'll call that one Star Wars Team. This one is Star Trek. Our, our actually developers do use geeky names like this. Um, I think it's just a R and D type thing, right? Um, Tabit stargazers. Okay, so now I've got a couple of teams, right? Um, and again, I'm kind of a color person, so I'm gonna quickly add some colors. Oops, let's make that one something else. Um, okay, so I've got some pretty good things going so far. All right, so I'm gonna click done. And then up here, I wanna add those columns. So I'm gonna scroll, I'm gonna open up my search panel, right? And here's all the different columns that I can add to this. But rather than scroll and look for the items I just created, um, I will type in team, team, there we go. And I will add that one and then big rocks. And you'll see why I'm doing this in a minute. This is just my way because I'm really, like I said, comfortable with Excel. Um, and so from here, I'm gonna assign the teams. And again, you know, I would know who's got the capacity or at least it would be a talking point. I'm gonna copy and paste. I'm gonna plop it in. And now I'm gonna go to the visualization, which is pretty cool. So I'm gonna go over to timeline. So now you can see I have my timelines, right? Wow. And I don't have yeah. colors. Isn't that cool? But yeah. I, I don't have colors, right? Which no. drives me nuts. And they're not placed correctly. So let's turn on colors. Um, let's color by team, because I just set them up. And because I know my stakeholders want to see it by the big rocks, there's my big rocks. Now, I'm going to move things around, right? I'm going to drop them into my areas. This is the part that I just think is so easy, you know, for anybody. Um, look at how, how fast I am able to create that data. Um, you know, and again, I, there's lots of other ways that, you know, I could probably um, do this, but at least I wanted to give you some kind of feel of how I get started and how quick and easy it is to go with it. Um, and I could also add lots more pick lists, right? I can have as many as I want. I can add metrics to those. You'll notice that we didn't really fill in any metrics over here. Let me just show you what happens if I do that. Um, and again, I'll use the rapid um, copy and paste once we get going. Oops, let's do just that. And again, control C, control V, since you can't really see what I'm doing, let's add a couple of um, operating costs. And I am almost done, so exciting, okay. Switch back to timelines, and now I'm gonna add those metrics here, and you're gonna see, I'm gonna just add capital, um, capital cost, 
And you see how immediately they show up in the bubble? Isn't that yeah. cool? So I've got yeah. like, like, you know, I've got the data that my stakeholders might need. So that's pretty fast. And yes, Andy, I think even you could do this. <laughs> I, I rarely am I lost for words, but I'm lost for words. Linda, I, that <laughs> was six brand new roadmap items with assignments, with metrics, with color coding. And we learned a whole heck of a lot about you and your preferences for color and Excel and Star Wars. And it only took like four minutes, but there's got to be a quicker way, Linda. I know you. Four minutes for six <laughs> items, you wouldn't be satisfied with that. You're going to show me a way to do this even faster, aren't you? Yeah, no, I, I get that. Um, because especially if we're, you know, doing a large roadmap and, and sometimes these roadmaps can have five or 6,000 items. I've got a couple of other ways, right? If I go up here to the item actions, you'll notice that I can actually import from PPM, so if it's a project or something that's set up in PPM, I can use that functionality. I can import from CSV if need be, um, which is an Excel spreadsheet. You know, I've done that many times too, and I just bring in my items. And then I can sync the items after I import. So let me go to import from PPM and look at all the options. Um, you may be wondering what some of these are. Projects and ideas are pretty logical, right? These are all my, my clarity projects and these yeah. are my clarity ideas, which is in the in the in the work. Now all of these up here, these are what we call custom investments. So I've created my own business outcomes and I can bring those in, objectives, product lines, products. I mean you can do so much, right? I I can go anywhere that I want to go. Why don't I go to ideas and it takes me directly to the idea get grid. So let me just add a couple of these um, that I know I want to bring in. So let's say I want to bring in those. And notice as I did that up here, I can click add. Um, or I can I can keep selecting, you know, others, but I'm pretty happy. So I'll click add and it's going to take me back over here. Now notice it says import and process. Now while it's importing, you can ask me any other um, thoughts that you might have, Andy, but I'm going to also click on the plus and I can even continue to work while I'm importing and I can add, you know, something else. So let's say this one is order retails. Whoops, helps if you can type better, right? Hey, I'm impressed. Better than I can do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sometimes it's just, you know, too, oops, and there it goes. Did you see that? Import complete. Yeah. And here's yeah. my item. Isn't just that, like that. I, I mean, I just think that's cool. Now, I can, what's interesting is you saw that maybe took a couple of minutes. Um, no that. matter whether I do five or a thousand, it's all about the same time. Again, I'm kind of an anal color person here, so I'm going to add one more. Let's just copy and paste and fill in the blanks, and then we will go back. We'll go back over here. Um, and now I have, you know, colors as well. So that makes me a little happier. I've got a lot of stuff that's wowing the new customers. Again, you can see I can, I can change these. I can shorten them. I can move them around. So what's good is as I work with the stakeholders, no matter what list I start with, right? I, I can do whatever they need to do. We can have a working session and do it together, which I think is, is kind of cool. And then as I, I mentioned, importing from CSV, I have templates in here that are a CSV file. Um, and as long as I have all the columns set up correctly in the template, I can import thousands of items as well. Um, so. Those are some of the ways that you can do that. Does that kind of answer your question a little bit? Yeah, this is awesome. This is, it's so simple, even I can understand it. I mean, this is, this is just amazing. <laughs> now, Linda, I know this is going to come as a huge surprise to you, but my bosses always take on more than they can actually deliver. I, I know it's shocking. It's absolutely shocking. But the items on the roadmap are always way more than we can actually ever finish. 
is there some way of showing right. some metrics and constraints so we can sort of have like a waterline approach and we can see what we got a chance of doing and what we're dreaming in Technicolor about? There is. There's a couple of different things we can do. Let me go back to sharing. I kind of wanted to um, stop sharing for a minute so that. Yeah, we need to see you. Are, it's your corner. You well, know, we need to see do. some corners. <laughs> <laughs> and and yourself as a moderator here, it's kind of nice to do that. Let me go to one that's um, a little more robust and got some data in it. So I will go to this one, fiscal year 2020. Um, and let's go to the grid view over here. Um, and I've already added a couple things, but let me just take this off and I will clear this. And let's see here, uh, per period metrics, I can leave that. So notice that what I've got here now is, is just my grid, right? It's got a lot of metrics. I mean, this one has a lot of costs, capital costs, operating costs. It's got some benefits in here. Um, it's got totals for the Q1. So I've got a lot of stuff. But what I want to do is I want to click on view options because now it's a working tool, right? And I'm going to show targets and I'm going to pick what my targets are. So let's do um, capital costs, let's do that one. Um, and then let's also do operating. Um, oops, helps again if I spell right. Operating costs, all right, that's good. And then let's do benefits. Benefit, okay, there we go. So you notice as I did that, I've got three um, targets up here, right? Um, now, I can change my target, like you can see on this one, capital cost, looks like I set a target for 750,000, um, and in plan I have 932, so I'm over, right? I'm going to have to deal with that, and I'm going to have to change some things. Let me just change this one to be something lower so you can see what the issues are. And over here, benefits. Okay, that's good because I like lots of benefits, right? Well, as I go through and analyze, I can move these columns around um, to whatever it is, you know, I need, whatever's important for me. I can sort stuff high to low. I can rank these if I wanted to add a rank column. Um, you know, I can sort them. Then as I decide, hey, um, you know, this was my top item here. I want that, but maybe I want to get rid of these bottom ones and I can see what happens. And you notice here, capital cost, I, I, I became within it. So now I just, just need like to, yeah, just like that, bring this one in line. Um, again, that sounds pretty simple, but it, it doesn't have to be complex, right? It doesn't have to, you know, have an actual drawing of a water line or have a bunch of business rules. So that's how I, I analyze. Um, do, is that is that helpful again to yeah. what you'd like to see? This is this is awesome. I mean, and I can actually imagine sitting in a meeting with the executives and going through this process. We're all looking at the screen, and we can see in real time what happens if we move priorities around. And it, it's so much easier to get the bosses engaged when they can actually see it there as opposed to when you have to go away and crunch numbers for a day and a half and then come back. It, you're much more likely to get engagement from them, which at the end of the day is what it's all about if we're going to get the, the right answers. Now, that leads me on to one final question for you. And I know I'm taking up a lot of your time here, but this one's important. Can we take that one step further? Can we actually do like a what if scenario and actually model some different options so we can consider the different, you know, what if we did this? What if we did that? Can you can you support that or am I asking too much? No, I can support that. Let me go back and share my screen again. Um, and there's a couple different things we can do on this one. Uh, but you are so right. Um, you know, it's it's really better to get buy-in from stakeholders. If, if right. I'm doing budgets or financials or uh, roadmap visions or whatever, I like to make sure that everybody's with me, right? And that if I get buy-in and, and have a working session. And you can see this is so much easier than an Excel sheet or a PowerPoint for a working session. I've got everything right here. We can add stuff as you saw. Um, I can I can remove items. I can move them around. Um, and I can also create different scenarios. So up here, I have my original forecast and I've tagged it as baseline. 
I can also um, go to the plan of record one if I so desire, and I can do a revised forecast. I can have as many of these different scenarios as I want. Um, so what I've got is I'm doing that original forecast, and then over here, I've got the ability to compare the scenarios. This is your what ifs, right? So I created one for a revised forecast, and it's if I don't have enough labor, um, don't have enough capacity, or don't have enough, you know, cost to do what we want to do for the year. And, and you know, whoever I'm meeting with says, oh, yeah, I think we're going to have to cut the budget by another million, right? I can keep all of these forecasts here, keep adding to them all the different scenarios, and then compare them as I want. I also have this ability to do show, and this will show me anything that wasn't in the original forecast. And you see how if I move things around, um, like this one, right? I moved this because, you know, we decided we didn't have enough staff at that time. It shows it in kind of a shadow box in a different place. Mm -hmm. So I can quickly see what was removed, what was changed, what was added. Um, it, it's very handy for me. You know, I just, I just think the world of <laughs> this tool and the flexibility to be able to communicate with my stakeholders. Does that answer your question? I, I got nothing left, Linda. You have blown me out of the water. This is this is the first Linda's Corner we've done. I'm absolutely convinced that we're going to do a million of these things, if not more, because this stuff is just so cool. It, to take functionality that is so powerful and to make it so simple for all users, so visual, so easy to move around, it's literally a drag and a drop and you can change what you need to change it. And, you're making the planning process less painful, which means it's going to be more engaging for people. And that's what it's all about, right? It's about improving the ability of organizations yeah. to deliver. Start with something tangible. Start with something realistic. Well, I'm sure this has been as eye-opening for, for everybody watching this as it has been for me. Um, the next uh, Linda's Corner is going to be even more exciting because it's about my favorite topic in the whole world, money. This has been Linda's Corner Roadmaps, and it's been absolutely awesome. Linda Chase, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Everybody watching this, thank you for staying with us, and uh, hope you had a bit of fun as well as learning something, and uh, we'll see you again real soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Great. Thanks, Andy, and thanks, everyone. Bye.